is Mary Mac, 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 all dressed in black, 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 and looking like Brian. Brian. <laughs> What's good, y'all? Welcome back to our channel. It's your boy, Bryant. If you tuned with us last week, um, well, last week in, in prior to, I was asked the question, what do I believe or feel about women shooting a shot at men? Last week, we sent around our talk around the Book of Ruth, chapters 1 through 4, and kind of just picking apart that book and realizing that Ruth actually shot her shot at Boaz. So my stance on if do I believe that women should shoot their shot at men? Yes, but it's a man's job to be able to pursue a woman, not just the other way around. Last week I also kind of body some of the men and last week I kind of challenged some of the women. I just think that we can do to make ourselves more marketable, applying wisdom, she was shoot with intention and all that kind of stuff. So last week, we tackled up four points. Number one is shooters don't shoot. If you see something you like, we talked about Steph Curry, he's a shooter, half court, shoot layups with the acrobatic shots. If you're a shooter, just shoot, number one. Number two, if you see something that you like, make a move. Again, I'm applying wisdom whenever you're shooting a shot. Just don't do all that kind of stuff. Number three, apply wisdom when shooting your shot. So just don't, like, you know, before you see something that you like, don't just, like I said last week, just don't be shooting in the dark. Um, Naomi and Ruth had recon. They had, you knew the the car facts or the history facts on Boaz before they shot the shot. And number four was remember even Jesus was denied. And I kind of ended off on abruptly last week, but that just goes to show that sometimes you shoot a shot at someone, they may not like you. Whether you're a guy shooting shot at a girl, girl shooting shot at a guy, they may not feel you. So you know what? And sometimes you get denied. Remember that even our Lord and Savior was denied. You know three times so don't let being denied by the significant not significant other by, by the opposite sex and discourage you from taking a step forward and shooting shot again cool so this week um this actually came to me like last night um i was kind of just digging through some certain things and i was like you know what like during this whole quarantine time there's like you know people's just feeling different ways so um this week it's titled Behind the Scenes or Behind the Curtains. And um, we're gonna, you know, dive into a little bit of, you know, why we challenge that or why we're calling it that. Um, and yeah, so just like tune in with us, let's track together, you know, let's let's do the dang thing, you know what's up. All right, and this is the point where we do the the scenes what are we going to be talking about right so first things first I want to make this disclaimer this video may or may not apply to everyone if you kind of get idea when I'm tracking or you know when I kind of choose a topic if it's not tracking with you still watch it regardless you know share it to somebody you never know might be in need but again this might not apply to you but this is for the people that may apply to you so in this time period Okay, so let's take a step back. So, like always Bible verse I want to give you guys a Bible verse but before I give you the Bible verse I want to paint a picture then I'm going to give you Mm, water. Uh, give you the Bible verse, and then you'll kind of some we're going. So during this time period, a lot of us, or if unless you've been living the rock, kind of know what we're going through right now. We're going through COVID nineteen, um, this pandemic of this virus, and a lot. You know, the the government and leadership has told us they endorse, they endorse. So a lot of us are utilizing this time to learn a new skill, um, do things we've been putting on for a long period of time, sleep more, rest more, do all those certain things. But on the opposite side, what happens if you're not doing those certain things? If you just want to rest or chill or in between doing certain things and you're just having a really, really out of mind. All right, this is where we're going to introduce the topic um, of the Bible verse. So 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you except such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able. But with temptation, with temptation will also make a way of escape that you will be able to bear it. Cool. Any idea what we're talking about? Yeah, temptation. So what about those times whenever your minds are idle, where your mind is idle, whenever, you know, you not studying, you're not working, you're not doing that, you've been trapped inside the house, you're quarantined inside the house, and you just feel as though that you need to get out. I have been feeling like this, and again, this is the reason why I don't want to talk about something I haven't been through. Um, it was important for many, many things kind of going in, especially like for me, I I love getting out, I love working out, I love playing basketball. These are ways that I'm able to kind of just release the tends to build up all that kind of stuff. But now we're not able to do that. You're not gonna go share basketball with somebody, you're not gonna go to the gym, you're not gonna do all the certain things. So it's really, really important for me to find awesome ways of this and I've found it as being a little bit struggle recently. Right? But um, a lot of important factors kinda of come into this and 
ways to kind of combat the temptation, the thoughts, the lust, and all that kind of stuff going in. Um, number one thing, just knowing your triggers. Um, it's important that you know your triggers. Like for me, my triggers, um, you know, could be watching a show, uh, could listen to music. It could be that second look, and that second look is like you know you see something innocently, scrolling through social media, and it's like oh I passed out, and then you scroll back. That second look is where that kind of grabs you, and then you don't realize how that thing kind of sticks to your mind in the time where your 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 mind is idle. You know, you go back to that image, and it causes you to do certain things. Because I've been feeling you know some way since we've what about a week and a half, two weeks now, and thank God for the strength. But you know, time like this is just important for us to know our triggers so we know what to stay away from we know what to lean on to uh i guess not really number two because i want to this is more of a conversation i kind of give to you guys as well too we dated back this about two videos ago highlighted it about a little bit last week about having a naomi inside your life just having community you know share with your brothers in christ your sisters in christ or people around you kind of what you're known to struggle with when you know your triggers you know one thing that i have is um, it's called covenant eyes that pretty much just like makes a lock on my phone um, and on my laptop that just doesn't allow me to access certain sites, you know? And what it does actually is funny, it takes random screenshots of my phone. So if I happen to be creeping da da da, the person who has my link to my account can see all of certain things that I'm going through, all that kind of stuff. It's quite, yes, you know, there's no loop around it, you know, loopholes around it, but it's imperative to just have that community of people around me. Um, and the Bible says in um, 1 Peter, 5 9 says that whom resist steadfast in their faith knowing that the same afflictions are um, accomplished in your brethren that are on the world which pretty much just means that knowing that you're not the only one who's going through certain things you're not the only one who's feeling this type of way i know a lot of times we try to single ourselves out oh, like you know you know what i'm going through with this is this or that mine's worse than yours and that but you know it's like the it's like we have people out there who are in maybe worse situations you know I don't want to compare but maybe be in worse situations than we actually in you know there are also Christians or even non-Christian people out there who are struggling with like the flesh of this time period of being an idol or this time of not you know moving about or not having the accessibility that they're used to you know waking up in the morning going to sleep you've been watching all the Netflixes and even for me I'm trying to like not eat everything inside the house you know what I mean so it's, it's important to for me to also remember and I say this to myself as well too because like important for me to remember I'm not the only one going through this you know but I remember and we'll get to this Bible verse later just about we having a savior who has been there came here on the earth who has gone through all these certain things that we may be able to be set free and I have this temptation that you know knowing for the fact that he won't tempt us beyond what we are you know being able to I guess with the bear bear um yeah I mean and that's kind of the synopsis of kind of wants to tackle with again it's a good amount of pie to everyone you know it may apply to some more than others but it's imperative to know our triggers you know i was even talking to a couple of my friends and not just guys as well too but kind of what they what they do to kind of work around those triggers and all that kind of stuff and for them you know some of the couple of suggestions that they mentioned was um accountability knowing that um definitely like knowing your triggers um one has said it's trying to limit your time on social media um, sometimes I'm following people who often work or because honestly man Twitter primarily has become like you know Pornhub 2.0 or like you never even want to call it because it's just constantly we're on there it seems like the time you're trying to flee you find yourself seeing things or scrolling through something that you just didn't want to like you know or that you just didn't want to see because right now your flesh is your flesh is kind of weak so um, limiting time to social media Muting people that you know or following people who just don't cause you to like cause you to stumble you know those certain things so it's a couple of triggers and then i was talking to um a couple of my girlfriends as well too and they had mentioned that especially a prime time for them so right before the time of the period when i think it was like hormones the sort of hormones are going like crazy at this point in time and it's like that point in time they're just you know really just going crazy and I spoke with a couple of them and they're just trying to find, you know, alternatives. Like, because, you know, your time of the month is not a time, you know, I'm sure if y'all woman could, y'all just like skip that whole part, but that's things you just really can't avoid. So a couple of things that they mentioned that they do, um, worship, um, distract yourself, stay busy. And I think that worshiping part is just so important because I've realized that a lot of times when I'm feeling flesh, when I'm feeling horny, that what, one thing that I tend to do is just to be honest with God, a lot, be a lot vocal, you know, talk it out with someone and just, you know, let them know how I feel, let God know how I feel, you know, while holding me accountable, of course, um, to make sure that, you know, 
I'm not dwelling on certain things. I realize that like being, you really can't hide anything. You actually really can't hide anything from God. And it's just nice to be honest with him and knowing and whenever I've ever done that, and it's like, you know, to be with you, my God, like I'm holding you with I'm trying to, trying to ruin somebody's daughter's life or something along the lines of that, you know what I mean? So whenever all that stuff kind of combats itself, I realize just being honest with him in that time period is a time where he just kind of heals me and allows me to become distracted or just kind of just takes it away from me, right? So, um, but all those things being said, um, again, uh, I just want us to remember that um, God continues to write the standard. You know, there are times when you may fall today and get back up tomorrow or may not get back up. Oh, not saying I get back up, but there are times where it may take you longer to get back up. And I was talking to one of my friends this past week and, you know, she had mentioned the fact of like, um, just knowing for the fact that, you know, she's not ashamed when she falls, that she, she she's learned to overcome that shame whenever she falls. You know, one of the biggest things or most hardest difficult times whenever you fall is to get back up. And that's one thing that we have to also keep in mind that, you know, whenever we do fall, it's imperative. <clears throat> imperative. It does like every video, I'll probably say imperative like once or twice. I'm, only, I'm out of one right now, but it's super important. <laughs> it's super important for us to be able to um, get back up in those time periods. I mean, one thing I want to, uh, main thing I want to kind of leave us with is Romans three twenty three, um, and it says, "For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God." So this just pretty much reminds us that even times that we try to be righteous and try to get it all together or try to, but there are going to be times that we do fall, and God takes those things into account. And one thing I love about God, and I've said this many times before, is that he brought Jesus down to to relate with the man. Jesus has went through everything that we can go through on this earth, being tempted and experiencing all this other kind of stuff, to know that we also have a way out. The Bible verse before us, so 1 Corinthians 10, 13, says that he won't tempt us beyond what we control. But in the times that we do fall short, times that we do fall, you know, we have to remember that God has given us room for us to be humans. He has allowed us, and that's why I say his grace, grace is sufficient, you know, we talk about before like God being an open door policy God. God is a God who doesn't, you know, is not far from either the broken hearted or he doesn't keep no, no you know, the, his love keeps no record of wrongs and all this kind of stuff. But it's like the devil tries to constantly tell us whenever we fall that we're not worthy, that we're ungrateful, that, you know, we're not worth his love or he doesn't love us or it's far from us. But all these other things are manipulations and lies of the devil. And that's one thing I want us to, you know, leave us with is that in times you do fall in this quarantine period with the months to follow, the days to follow. Remember, you're not alone in this. You know, I'm right there with you. Trust me, I'm, I'm getting by like almost like every single day. It's like a certain time period. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to start like, you know, going to sleep earlier. And even in the daytime, but you remember, you're, just, you're not alone in this, all right? Um, just also remember the fact of like, you know, in times that you do fall, just get back up. You know, the hardest part for you to do in that time period is just to pray. But get back up, pray, consult with God, consult with your friend, your accountability, your other kind of stuff. Get covenant eyes. Um, whatever, you know, you can do to kind of just take this time period. I mean, my definitely my condolences go out to those who have like lost people at this point in time. I don't want us to emphasize on this part without talking about the reason why we're here. You know, but just during this corona time, I mean, I'm somebody who didn't take it as seriously, you know, but I guess that's the death numbers are, death tools have to go up and, you know, take it more seriously and just start seeing that, you know, people my age, I'm 26, people my age are dying from it. Something serious. So my prayers, my my encouragement, my stay home hashtag goes out to everyone. Um, don't go out unless you need to. Um, definitely trying to, you know, when I put myself there too. And also, <coughs> sorry, that's the last thing I'm gonna leave with as well. <coughs> There's a, a Bible verse, <coughs> and sorry, First Corinthians seven nine. Wow, First Corinthians seven nine. Um, talks about Paul. Real quick, um, talks about Paul, and he had mentioned in First Corinthians seven nine, and said, "Ha, I wish that y'all were all as myself, but to each is only gift from God, one account to one another. To the married and to the widows, um, it is good that I say for them to remain single, all that kind of stuff. But they, but if they cannot exercise self control, in verse nine, they should marry. For it is better to marry than to burn passion. Don't think marriage is a scapegoat." to your flesh or your temptation or your burning with lust. That's not. The goal of marriage is to be able to cultivate a ministry from it and to cultivate good fruits. I mean, I know like a lot of, you know, elder people that I've talked to has just necessarily said that they're, you know, 
sex drive either has not said gone down, but they don't have as much sex as you would think, you know, years into marriage, all that kind of stuff. So let us not think, and if this is something that you guys want me to kind of dig into, I don't mind doing that as well too, but let us not think or try to rush into marriage because we're trying to abstain from X, Y, Z as marriage being the scapegoat for me to have as much sex and all that kind of stuff I want to. That's not the answer or key. So, um, I want to thank you guys for tuning in today. Not really a bunch of points, but just remember, you know, go back, rewind, you know, know your triggers. Men, women, tall, short, round, whatever you want to call it, we all go through the same stuff. And remember that, you know, God continues to raise the standards. And even in times that we fall, get back up, keep on going, and just try to just avoid those certain things. We all fall short of the glory of God, but He is with us. He's loving us. He's caring for us all the step of the way. Thank you, guys. God bless. Whoopsies! Definitely forgot to pray. Um, but if we just bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we give you all the glory always and thank you, Lord, for just keeping us safe in this time prayer. We pray that you be with those who have lost loved ones during the pandemic, God, and even those who are still here, Father God, and um, do not have the virus, God. You keep us safe and make us invisible to the virus, God. And even in times that we go out, in times we just can't be in the house anymore, God, we pray that you be there with us and understand that you're with us wherever we go. Um, help us to be able to combat the temptations of you know, the flesh and temptations of our mind and purge those thoughts and memories, God, and just find time that we can just spend time with you and pray more, worship more, do all these certain things, God. Um, in all things, we give you glory. Um, we pray that you bless not just the watchers of this video, Father God, you bless everyone. Bless all the leaders, the churches who may be going through time, financial times, because, you know, not being inside the actual storehouse, Father God, the businesses of people have been laid off, the unemployed, God. Just pray that you be with them always. A lot of us have questions, God, but we know that you're always in control. At the end of the day, Father God, you are, and you know exactly what you're doing. May you receive all the glory, all the love, adoration, Father God, the thanks. And, um, yeah, God, you're tight. Thank you, bro. No, not bro. Let me put some spark in there. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye!